this lesson, I'll show you how to use hatching and cross-hatching techniques, as well as stipple techniques, and we'll see how to create dense darks and highlights using pen. Let's start by looking at hatching. Hatching is created when non-crossing lines are used to indicate the value on or around an object. Cross-hatching is the layering of planes of parallel lines on top of each other in order to create a gradient or texture in a drawing. The strokes defining the shading on an object are closer together and appear darker in the area where the tone should be more intense, and they appear farther apart where the lighter tones and highlights should be. Let's create a hatching value scale so you can see what I mean. Here we have our five empty boxes in a grid, and we are going to progressively start from light to dark. So starting with the hatching technique, here are some parallel lines I'm just going to toss in there. The idea is not to cross them, but to make them somewhat far apart so they appear light. My next box should have lines that are closer together. The idea is to make them appear slightly darker when viewed from a distance. And these can go in any direction, by the way. I just happen to like this diagonal, left to right, but they can certainly go up, down, side to side, whatever way you want. Even tighter. These lines are so close together. They are almost touching, but not quite. And they definitely appear darker when viewed from a distance. I can go over it a little bit, too. I'm going to start with the cross hatching at this point, because my lines in box three were so close together not really much room for them to get closer. So I'll lay down my first layer and then opposite that, go ahead with the cross hatching. This is a really fine pen that I'm using, by the way. It is a Sharpie fine point pen. Any tool will do, whatever you're most comfortable with. This one gives a nice, really fine line though. Box five, this is gonna be very dense, very dark. So I might actually go over this a couple of times. I'm gonna lay down my first few layers of parallel line and then go over it again, cross hatching. So there should be a definite light to dark viewing as you take a look at it from left to right. If you're using pencil as you're creating this, you want to make sure that it's sharp. Otherwise, they might get too close together and you won't be able to see any of that white space in between. You can use parallel lines, cross contour lines, or both when you're creating a hatching, cross hatching drawing. The next technique I'll show you is stippling. Stippling, also known as pointillism when color is added, is a type of drawing that involves creating shapes and images by making many small dots on a piece of paper to indicate shading. Probably the most time consuming of all methods, but it really creates some nice effects. The points defining the shading on an object are closer together and appear darker in the area where the tone should be more intense, and the points are farther apart where the tone should be less intense. To have a polished looking drawing, don't make dashes and keep all the dots evenly spaced. Although you can put some dots close together and others far apart, the finished work will look more attractive if the dots are evenly spaced. Let's take a look at that in a value scale. So, creating dots, what you want to do is have a nice little anchor for your wrist. You want to rest your wrist or your hand on your paper. That way it'll give you a nice anchor to create dots with. If you're holding your arm up like this, you're more likely to make dashes. Give yourself a rest, this is helping yourself out. This first box is going to be somewhat light, so these dots will be far apart from one another. We're going for a nice light tone when viewed from a distance. The second box, dots will be closer together. And as you get good at this, you can act like a machine and just dot them out. But as you're getting used to it, just make sure they are somewhat evenly spaced and you are not making dashes. It can get tedious. You are going to need to rest your wrist after doing this for a little while, but that's okay. It'll give you an opportunity to step back from your work and look at it. I'm going to continue filling in this value scale and progressively make my dots closer together, and then I'll let you take a peek at what it looks like. You can see the range of values we can get from these two techniques. Next, we'll apply them to a drawing of a pair. So now we're going to stipple a pair to start off with. As you can see, I have a very light outline of a pair, 
and there's all these funny little lines marked up inside. That's just basically a guideline that I created for myself in order to figure out what tones will go where. So let's just jump right in. I have my nice thick Sharpie marker, so this would save a little bit of time. And I like to start in the darkest area first. So I have highlighted or outlined this area to be the darkest area. So nice close dots, I'm just gonna start banging it out. Resting my wrist on the paper because I'm in for a long haul here and I need to make sure I'm nice and comfortable. Sometimes stippling projects can take hours, if not weeks, depending on what it is that you're doing. So just make sure that you're comfortable and when you need a break, definitely take it. So I'm making these really nice tiny dots, evenly spaced and close together because they will appear as a solid when viewed from a distance. That is the goal. This artwork is made to be viewed from a distance. So all of these fine dots will appear to blend into one another and to a nice gradation. By anchoring my wrist, I'm avoiding making dashes, which is not something you want to do when you're stippling. And I don't want to rush it too. Rushing is not your friend when you are stippling. You want to take your time, lay those dots down nice and evenly. But there's not really any right or wrong way to go about doing this. It, some people like to fill in the whole area with a nice fine far apart layer of dots and then go in and add the dark spots later. Other people like to work the way I'm working by just making a mass of dots and working outward. There's not a right or wrong way to do it. Personal preference. I'm almost done with this dark, dark, dark area. And I'll move into the slightly lighter area. Right next to it, I can start to make my dots a little bit further apart. So I am going to continue stippling my pair. Make sure that you're looking at an object or a photo for reference so you know where to put your dark darks and your highlights in. It's good to have something to look at so you know where to lay down those tones. So after laying down the initial tone, I stepped back, saw where it needed a few more dots, and added it so it looked good to me. Squinting is also a nice thing that you could do that could help you figure out what tone should go where. Nice balance is what you're looking for. So let's move into hatching and cross-hatching. I have the same outline of a pair, but with less detail drawn on the inside this time, and I am going to lay down some hatching and cross-hatch marks to shade this in. So as before, I'm going to go ahead and start with the dark area. And I'm going to use some curved lines just so it appears to be wrapping around the pair. These are almost like cross contour lines, if you will. And I'll just start in with the darkest areas first. These will definitely be cross hatching later. But for now, I am just going to lay down some lines to block out some of that whiteness. There's a lot of white there. We want to indicate where the shadows are going. So with my rounded lines, I'm gonna go ahead and just block it out. In the darkest area, this was definitely going to be some cross hatching, so I will bring my lines a little closer together and cross them over. And even though we don't want to outline our pair per se, since we are using hatch lines and cross hatch lines, we can do that to a certain extent because these lines will eventually blend in with the shading that we're creating. On the stem, it's very dark, so I'll use some cross hatching and then just bring the edges out so there's not a lot of white there with some extra line following along the cross contours of the shape so we can see all that definition. Just adding my cross hatching here.
a little more hatching, keeping my lines somewhat parallel. And I'm leaving an area for a highlight, so I'm avoiding this upper left right hand side here, just to make sure I can have enough space for a highlight there. With pencil you can erase, marker not so much. But the more lines you put down, the more defined this pair becomes. I have most of the lines laid down on my pair, I can attempt to work on the shadow, which is also somewhat dense, especially where the pair would hit the table. I can make some nice tight lines in that area, and they can just get further out from that point. Do a little cross hatching there, just to ensure we know that those are nice and dark. These can extend out as far as I want my shadow to be. Also add a little bit more darkness where that pair meets the table just to show that it does go in and it's further away from the light. And just keep working on it until you, the artist, are happy with it. So that's how you can get a nice cross-hatched pair. Obviously these techniques is, are going to give you different results and it's a matter of preference. Here's another picture that I did using pencil that's using hatching and cross-hatching.